You are listening to the Witness Where You Are podcast with Robert Ertler and Ellie Basarab. How do we truly reach heaven? Does God still give prophecies today? Are we in the end times now? May we all surrender to the Lord, letting the Holy Spirit guide us during today's deep discussion. Welcome, everybody uh, who's just joining us. This is the Witness Where You Are podcast. If this is the first time you're joining us, please just know that this is episode 12, chapter 14 of the Book of God's Mysteries, Urgent Prophecies on Code Two Paths to Heaven. It's a pretty expansive book, and while it's called the Book of God's Mysteries, it actually answers the mysteries that were left behind in the canon. And so they were parabolic in their parables and we are uh, now sharing what God has revealed in the clear answers to those mysteries. Only reason that those things are in front of us today <clears throat> and before us is because of the time that we're in. And so we need to really know the clarity of what he has for us. And so uh, with that, Ellie and I, we do pray before these episodes. So we would ask that you pray as well and really try to surrender yourself to the Lord and try to forgive others, try to say a repentful prayer, try to get right before the Lord, um, because it's really important that you hear the message that God has for you, not us. We're truly just witnessing of how He's acted in our lives. We're just people just like you. It's only to share what God has gloriously given. And so we would pray that you would have your own personal prayer in your time with the Lord. Put this on pause if you need to, and then come back and then rejoin us. And there's 17 chapters in the book. And the 17th one is a closing remarks, kind of a wrap up. And so it's going to be important. It's going to be impactful to the church to hear it. Content wise, this is the icing on the cake, if you will, to really understand what exactly is going on and what's going to come. So this is something that it's titled Scriptures, Declaring Scriptures, and that's what we're going to do here in this episode. We need to take the time to unpack what Scripture says Scripture is, right? So what does the Bible tell us? And how does the Bible and the word of our canon describe what Scripture is? Now, I'm not talking about inspired writings. I'm talking about Scriptures. Everybody can be inspired by God, but that writing on your phone or your anywhere on a sticky note is not necessarily Scripture. And it doesn't mean that that inspired writing needs to be in a canon or another book of canon. And so we're all filled with things, and our testimony is inspired by God. There's something that I want to just kind of touch base with really quick before she reads some canonical verses for you. In Revelation, so people will hear, or, you know, they'll read the verse that says that, you know, you're not supposed to take away or add to the book of Revelation, or you're going to be right. subject to the curses within the book, right? Mm. And so people, without really knowing and understanding what that means, would say anything outside of the 66 canonical books is heretical. Even though, you know, say the Catholic Bible has more books, and then there's the Ethiopian Bible that I think has like 84 books. Um, don't quote me on the exact number, but I think it's like 81 or 84 books. And that's been in their canon, and that is claimed to be older than even the KJV. Hmm. So, you know, when I say the, the 66 canonical books, I'm not saying that that's definitively that there are 66 books. There could be others that did not make it in based on the groups of people that have decided to make it be 66. So I don't want to say that that's all conclusive. I just will acknowledge that those 66 books are inspired and prophetic writings meant for the church and they are to lead you to heaven and salvation in an eternal amount of salvation. And so we have to understand that the book of Revelation is a single book. Now, some of the books come in the canon out of order. So the oldest book in the Bible is not Genesis. The oldest book in the Bible is actually Job. There's like a handful of books that are out of, chron out of order. chronological order, but it, it does happen to be true that the last book is the last chronological book that came from a man named John. It was not John the Baptist, but most people will think that it was the Apostle John, but it could have been another John. Nonetheless, the man is John, and he is the one who's writing this book. And so it says in the Revelation that you're not to add to this book. Now in scriptures, it will mention that there's a volume of books, of several books, and that's what we would call the canon. But within the 66 books, the, the word canon is not there. The word Bible is not even in the Bible. But a volume is, and so that's many books. So 
there's a plurality uh, in the word volume, which is only used once, by the way. But then everything else is known as a single book. So when he's referring to this book, it's literally the book of Revelation. Don't add to the book of Revelation or take away from it. It's important to understand that. It's important, too, to realize that it's saying that because it expects that there is more prophecy to come. Obviously, last episode, we know that after the locusts come in Trumpet 5, that's when, you know, per Joel 2, when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon everybody and all the Book of Life people still remaining are then now prophesying. And so we know that prophecy is coming. So what we want to do is we want to say, what does the canon say that Scripture is? We have to also realize that even with the second book that was written chronologically, those Scriptures added to Scriptures, the first book, and the third added to the first and second even the 66th added to all that came before it. So what we see in scriptures is not a stop of prophecy or a stop of scriptures. We see a continuation, a pattern of continuation that has been accepted from generation to generation. That is the norm, how God had worked. We have to just kind of think about that in this chapter. And so we also have to remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, as Hebrews 13.8 tells us. So he has this consistency to him and how he works. And so with that, I felt that it would be best that, Ellie, if you would mind just reading this end note. Which end note is it? So this is end note 24. And it and comes from chapter 2, but it's applicable to this chapter as well, but... Exactly. For those of you who have the book in front of you, this is where she's reading. And there's a lot of Bible verses, so I'm just going to read <laughs> through them. Yes, yeah, so this is really awesome to hear um, You know what's in our canon that we all have. And so if you're a person who has not taken the time to read all of the Bible, uh, most people have not, let alone to read it many times and study it. Again, most people have not done this. So this is really great for all of us. But um, it's really important to read them in this way because this is what the canon that we all have says. And this is the canon that, you know, these 66 are in the Catholic Bible. They're in the Ethiopian Bible. These 66 are everywhere. As Christians, this is what we all have faith in as being valid and true. And so let's just hear what they say. And then we'll recap afterwards what they told us. All right. Well, let's see what Scripture says about Scripture. Daniel 10.21 But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Matthew 21.43 Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Matthew 26.56 but all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Mark 12:24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? Luke 24, 44, 45. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Luke twenty four twenty five. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Luke twenty four twenty seven. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. John 5.39 Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. John 7.38 He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 10.35 If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. John 19.28 After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, 
that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. John 2.22 When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Acts 17.11 These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scripture daily, whether those things were so. Romans 1.2 Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. Romans 9.17 For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Romans 15.4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we were through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 16.26 But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. 1 Timothy 5.18 For the scripture said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out of corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. 2 Timothy 3 15 through 17. And that from a child, though has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make these the wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Peter 1.20 Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Yes, thank you for reading that. Isn't it interesting that it said all of that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So to hear it grouped like that is powerful. But like even just the end notes section of the book, almost every statement that's made, <laughs> there's like almost as much writing of canonical support that is in the back of the book that you can see exactly how it's supported. That's powerful because we need to see what's in the biblical word of God in the canon and to know how it's tying to this message today, like one for one. Mm -hmm. So it's just a proof that all of this message has been given to a degree already, Mm -hmm. and that it's not necessarily a new message, it's an expanded, clearer message for the same purpose to get us to heaven. So we, we do put it there so it can edify you, so it can comfort you and give you hope and peace. But Ellie, if you wouldn't mind reading here on page 182, what Ellie's about to read here is the takeaway from the verses that we read. So it's basically summarizing what we read so that we know what Scripture is telling us Scripture is and how we can apply it right now. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. And this is a direct passage from the book on page 182. It has been revealed that what has been written is from God. His prophecy is scripture. His law is written in our heart and mind, and we are his children written in a book. He loves writing. These are further absolute truths within the scriptures. We also importantly see that this message is identical to what God has recently been expansively sharing, and it gives peace. May he bless you with his Holy Spirit to also know this to be perfectly true and of his righteous doing. Knowing that scriptures are written prophecy, we know that they expect future prophecies to also be written and published as new additional scriptures. This is because God enabled all of his prophets to write scripture per his leading. All of this concludes into the following scripturally defined declaration of new scriptures. The Book of God's Mysteries, Urgent Prophecies, Uncode, Two Paths to Heaven, 
is true and of the Lord's doing from His holiness. God has prophetically revealed writings within it and gave inspiration to write it all down. The prophetic understandings are to be given to His followers through His Holy Spirit and consistently teach of saving sinners as they start to believe and obey God in His righteousness. They are meant for everyone to faithfully obey, and God rewards His followers with wisdom toward eternal salvation in doing so. These God-inspired writings given must be fulfilled. They testify of Jesus Christ as being our Lord and Savior, continually offer paths to eternal life, and cannot be broken. They command our God's will conveyed to us and show His power as prophecies already have and will continue to take place. They are valuable for teaching and learning, can realign and unite Christ's followers, and with patience they give comfort and hope that heaven can be reached with God. Yeah, and so that's what we see. And so as God started acting in my life, it's been about the last four years now of of this. It's been obviously life changing to me, you know, and maybe not obvious to you, but it's it has changed my life. So all of these things I cannot deny. I was inspired to write them down. There's something inside of me that is constantly led to write. And as I write, like big things keep coming and it, that's just like a testimony in itself. And so I just find myself on this path. He keeps revealing all these dreams and revelations and associations that are tied together that are super deep that I've given no thought to, but I understand this massive association with several scriptures involved. Many times he's done that. I mean, so again, I know what I know. I know what I've heard. I've, I did not grow up in church. Um, I plugged into church in the Mormon church and learn Mormon doctrine, which is false, you know, in, in the ways that they're following all of these false prophets. And I had read the Bible again, but I hadn't studied the Bible and the word. And it was not in my heart and mind to do that. I, I was not choosing to dive in topically. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is I didn't know any more that what I was writing was just, I was inspired to write it. And I knew that these accounts, to me, that was what was the underlining thing was this is why I'm writing is because these accounts are from God and they're changing my, they're giving me all these, this information and the things are made clear. And like, it, I've seen things that explain things that people have longed to know the answers for. And it, the answers were given before I even knew there was a mystery. That's how naive I was. I had no idea about all of these stories of the Bible. Even to this day, I couldn't tell you what happens in Ruth. Like, I'm not a biblical scholar. I have not gone to Bible college. I didn't grow up going to Sunday school classes. That's where I, it's part of my testimony that I know what I know, and I know what I've heard. There hasn't even been a rumbling of these teachings with the people around me. Very few instances I had encounters with somebody that I knew of the church, and I needed those, but they were small inklings of information of the Word of God. I just knew that people followed Him, and I know, and I knew who followed them, who followed God, and I had just like these small encounters with what God could do and the power of God. And then I became prayerful. So what I'm trying to get at is I found later in the process what prophecy was scripture is written down prophecy Mm -hmm. and that there when you read all of these verses again you can see that it's not just inspired writing these are from prophets who have written and it's supposed to serve a certain task set of things you know there's like 56 instances of the word um, scripture or scriptures and so out of these 53 there are multiples there's duplications And so when you can find all instances and then say, okay, that's a duplicate, it's saying the same thing, you strip out the duplications and you're left with these individual unique instances of the word scripture in our canon. And that's what you just read, was Mm -hmm. all of the unique versions 
of what our canon says scripture is. So you might rewind the episode and go and read those again or listen to those again. But that's what scripture is. It is prophetic writings. And so I had to then take some inventory management of what I had dealt with. And I had to look I I had to look back at one point. I was like, I feel led to start jotting down these experiences. I was telling them to you for months, but then I I was on my couch one day and I was led to just start writing them down. And then of course the order that they happened in. Mm-hmm. And I think I had like seven or ten or twelve or something. And at that point I'm you know, I'm start having more and I'm now I'm adding to my note list on my phone of these accounts. Well, after I was sharing them with you, yeah, this is kind of what's been happening. And I just I put them down and, and now we kind of can see them here and we can see like the order that they came in. Well, as I'm sharing them with you and I'm, I'm recalling them myself, just going through them in my own time after they're written down or typed in my phone, I'm starting to realize that there's like categories to what they are. Like, okay, this was a dream. This was a vision. Oh my gosh, this mm. one was about something that was in the future. So I, I was then like, oh, you know, it was definitely like a humbling moment because I'm like, n- I'm nobody, I'm nothing. And, you know, without, I'm not nothing, but I'm nothing without God. God makes me who I am in his glory. And I don't want to diminish the glory in his creation in me or you or anybody. All of his creations are magnificent creatures that he's created us all in. It, mm-hmm. So we can't, we don't deny ourselves to hate ourselves or put ourselves down. To deny ourselves is to recognize that he created me. I'm I'm nothing in the sense that my, every breath that I have is gracefully given by God. Um, Amen. And so I have to honor my God in the things that he's shown me that I cannot deny. And now I'm finding it in the Word of God in the 66 books that what I've been writing down, some of it has been prophecy. Some of it has been scriptures. And I couldn't even call myself a prophet for a long time. Like a year, I... Um, So, I'm, I'm not worthy. Of anything. This is only for his glory. It's all of his power. And so what I was writing was was prophecy and had scripture. It's and as we as we go on the to these two remaining um, chapters in the book. It's going to there. Hopefully they're going to be just standalone episodes. If, if we can cover them all, I, that's what I would, would like, but I don't want to squash the content either for you guys. So I, I try not to hold anything back. I just try to keep it within the context of the chapters. All I've tried to do when I don't expand upon something because it's going to be expanded later. You're going to get the whole, the whole thing. If you listen uh, to the end of these, these episodes, excuse me. So I come to realize that this book I have to recognize it without being ashamed of what it is. I don't claim it for any glory for myself, but I have to claim it only because that's what God has defined it being. And I have to recognize what it is without diminishing what he's done. Mm-hmm. And this is this has further monumentally changed my life and my perspective of what we've been sharing here and what's shared in the book. Because it is so much more than any one human mind could ever figure out or make up or fake. This is stuff that is on such deep levels that the history of the smartest network of mankind has not ever been able to decipher and uncode the mysteries of the gospel of salvation that is in the canon. Nobody has been able to do this. So it's not one person that is figuring in this out in 2023. It's not me. So people, period, do not have the ability to do this. Or it would have been done a long time ago. There's been so many followers of Christ that try to follow after Christ. 
legitimately they love God and they want to they want to know Him. Whether they're a Calvinistic person or Arminian or something in the middle or a blend, a non-denominational Christian, a Catholic, they're good people. They want to go to heaven. They want to pray to the right God. This is the multi-form God that we pray to acting and we just need to know how to follow him and all of this prophetic writing that's in this book it's scripture i have to cut it off there because there there's more to come about this but this was a layer that took it to another level for me to realize that these things were prophetic and then we saw things happen there are still things that are to come true and they're big dangerous things that we need to be aware of and I try to post on my social media. I try to post uh, on my Facebooks, on Instagram. I try to share it with people where, you know, it's in the book. It's going to be in an audio book and a, a ebook and a paperback and a hard copy. And it's in teachings in this podcast series. It's We're trying to get it out to everybody in every way so people can just hear we're not expecting this to go uh, and be accepted virally, you know, w- with millions accepting this. I expect the sliver of the f- to add to the few to accept this. So, you know, prophets are not accepted generally, especially now. Now today, you know, I think the saying is not in their home home country or whatever. But that's certainly what I've experienced. People generally in the masses do not accept this. But we also have 30,000 denominations that are all different, and that's a problem. It does not mean that those people are not going to heaven, but it's confusing. And God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. This is the truth of God. I just pray that people would grab this and give it a second to just think about all that we're preparing here and showing in this. This is from God This is to help you. Does it bring you closer to God or does it take you away from God? This allows you to walk closer to God. Um, These are good things that you should try and test for yourself and test your walk. The apostle says to do that, so do it. Test it. But this book is a book of scripture and it is to add to the volume that Revelation knew was coming. It knew it was coming. It says that it's coming in Revelation 10, prophecy in a book, that scripture. It's coming in the future for the end times. The church needs to be ready for this book. And here it is. That's the magnitude and gravity of what this book is. This is another book. I'm not going to say it's the 67th book, but it is another book to the volume of the truth of God and his power. And that's what this is. This is the biggest news since the book of Revelation, literally. And it's to bring you to Christ and to bring more people to heaven. Anything uh, to, to close with, Ellie? I just wanted to say what a blessing it is that God is alive and acting and talking to us through his scripture. His holy scripture is active today. Yeah. And we are just so blessed to be part of this. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. We give all the praise and glory to our Father in heaven. And we we hope that you're you're led by the Spirit to seek after his kingdom above all else. Seek after that and and all else will be added to you. We'll catch you on the next one.